What's going on guys? My name is Arrow and in today's video I am bringing you my build for the Mayhem event. Stay tuned. All right, so we are planning on playing Blade Vortex Occultist Chaos Hit. You're not scaling poison damage simply because I didn't want to. So I whipped this up yesterday. I am actually pretty excited with how it turned out. There's not a lot of difficult to access items here. Most of the rares are just stats and res and life. Um, and then a pretty straightforward tree. So we'll start with the ascendancy. You want profane bloom because you want explosions. Um, we are also scaling power charges. Not a ton, but we are. We're getting these three. Uh, we have our three standard and then we have one from for forbidden power this is going to give us some damage but more importantly it's going to give us area of effect that scales not only our blade vortex but our explosions and we take void beacon for nearby enemies have reduced chaos res and life regen and withering presence is going to give us 60 chaos res chaos damage and withering on enemies which is very very strong so we combine the ascendancy with two obliteration wands so we now have 80 percent chance to explode enemies uh, dealing chaos damage. We also get Fizz as extra chaos, and we are just scaling the Fizz uh, to get extra. So we combine the Fizz as extra there from the Ming's Heart, and that is another 60-ish uh, Fizz as extra chaos. So all, all in total, we're gonna have almost 150 uh, Fizz as extra chaos from these three items. I imagine these are gonna be very easy to acquire. Mayhem League is going to have lots and lots of rares and uniques. Um, 20 rogue exiles in a zone, that's so much rarity. 20 invasion bosses in a zone, they drop lots of unique items. So obliterations are gonna be super easy to come by. I imagine I'll have both of these by maps, no problem. The Ming's Heart, I'm not sure how difficult this will be to get on day one. I don't think it will be difficult to get, but it's not mandatory. Um, but with this item, we actually cap our chaos resist. The Ming's Heart, with a, with a nothing roll, and our ascendancy gets us to cap that is so so nice for something like the mayhem event where things are going to be different there's going to be different mods on zones sometimes fizz is chaos um, lots of bosses lots of rogue exiles you're gonna be seeing a lot of chaos damage so having this at cap with just one item is fantastic um, most of our gear here is just life res and stats I don't have a ton of of any of those things on each item. Like this only has 20 res on it. It's got a little strength. Uh, some regen, you're gonna wanna get regen where you can. Um, and then I have a plus one amulet. I don't imagine that will be very hard to acquire. You're gonna need some dex, you're gonna need some strength. And all the way down to the belt, same thing. I don't even have any res on this, just armor, life, and regen. The Sins Rebirth Flask. I don't know how difficult this will be to get, but Unholy Might's very strong for us and this is the easiest way to get it. So highly, highly recommend Sins Rebirth when you can. For jewels, you just want life, spell damage, crit multi, any of those things. Conqueror's Efficiency Jewel, uh, you get this while leveling. So it gives us some mana reservation efficiency to allow us to have enough mana to cast all of our utility spells. A uh, little bit of um, skill effect duration as well for Blade Vortex, but this is just really easy to get, fits right into the build. So we get about 3 million damage, and that's with um, that's with Grace instead of Zealotrian. If you want to go for a little bit more damage and a little bit less survivability, you can drop Grace. Um, you'll still have some evasion, and this is going to give us about 20% more damage. I think Grace is better. Determination and Grace together give us 15,000 almost of evasion and armor. That's gonna make you feel pretty tanky for the mapping process until you have some better items. Um, Blade Vortex, we're gonna use Life Tap because fixing mana issues on League Start is kind of tough. But aside from that, it, it's gonna be pretty easy to, once you get your six link, it's gonna be pretty easy to, to get this going. 132 life cost is not a problem because we don't have to cast very often because it's Blade Vortex. And we have a bunch of regen and a bunch of life leech. So we'll fight right through that life cost, no problem. Uh, Petrified Blood is going to keep us at low life. And we are low life on our trait over here. Let's go back to our skills. Using Herald, Herald of Purity and Vitality on Arrogance. 
uh, to take away life since we have petrified blood. We want an Arcanist brand that has Void Sphere and Assassin's Mark. Void Sphere is just kind of like a nice quality of life thing where it'll cast, it'll pull the enemies together and, uh, and hinder them so they're, they're slower. Um, Molten Shell is going to be really nice for defense. I'm going to keep that on a cast when da damage taken, a pretty low level one, so it, uh, it goes off more often. Withering Step on left click, very important. We are going to be able to keep up max wither stacks very easily on this build. Um, so you'll see that I have a self-cast wither here. So combine six stacks from Withering Step. Our Ascendancy gives us one every second, one stack of withered every second for, so when we're bossing, you know, a couple seconds in, you're already gonna be at nine, 10, and then you can just hit your wither real quick on a boss because you don't have to keep casting Blade Vortex. So as you're running around the boss, you cast Wither on it every once in a while. And you'll be at max Wither stacks, no problem. You don't need totems. The problem with totems is they die. You need a four link setup for them. I think for a league start situation like this, just self casting Wither every once in a while is going to be fine. So as far as the tree goes, we're grabbing as much life as we can. We're grabbing crit multi. We're grabbing fizz damage. Um, and that's honestly about it. We take the chaos nodes up here. These are very, very strong for us. Um, the pathing of this is not great, but this is a level 90 tree. I don't want to have any cluster jewels in the setup. So I think getting 3 million damage with this amount of survivability and huge explosions is going to feel really nice. So lastly, let's talk about some upgrades that you're going to want as soon as you can afford or may fit into your version of the build. Because obviously what you find, what you can afford is going to dictate where you go. The Carcass Jack, um, area of effect and area of damage, life, res, evasion. Just a great all around chest for us. It's probably gonna be hard to get one of these in a six link, but if you do come across some currency and you wanna upgrade your chest, this is a great way to do it. The area of effect from the Carcass Jack affects not only our Blade Vortex, but again, our explosions. The bigger your explosions, the more likely you are to overlap a bunch on rares and bosses from your obliterations and from our ascendancy and less time you're gonna to have to spend actually doing damage to them. The next thing, as an S Gentle Touch, this is going to improve your clear by a lot. With 80% um, explosions from Obliterations and the Ascendancy, combined with the guaranteed explosions of as an S Gentle Touch, which do get your Fizz's extra, so 3% of their life as Fizz damage, including all of the all of the extra Chaos damage. This is gonna feel really, really good if you can get a pair of these. Again, as an are very common, as of this league, as of 319. So I imagine these are gonna be pretty easy to, to get your hands on on day one or two. Um, next, the Magnate Belt. This is just double and triple damage. Um, it'll probably be pretty easy to get to 200 strength if you have this belt because you get 45 from it. A ton of res and then just more damage. So this is just a nice, a nice to have. Shadows and Dust is like best in slot for us in the glove slot if you don't want to use Gentle Touch. It gives us crit, crit multi, it gives us smoke clouds when you rampage, which is for uh, blinding enemies, and it gives you rampage, and it gives you unholy might every time you rampage, which is just a bunch more damage if you don't have Synth Rebirth yet. So those are just some, some upgrades you can do. I'll be making a video uh, on my progress so you guys can see what I do, but I really am looking forward to playing this build. It's, it looks like it's going to be pretty tanky. I've never actually played this before. I haven't tested it. Um, so I can't guarantee it's going to be amazing, but I have played a lot of Blade Vortex. I've used a lot of these items in the past. So 3 million damage, 100% crit, 500 multi, um, good amount of life, evasion ES, capped chaos. This is going to feel pretty good, I think. So lastly, let's talk about how we're going to level it. Um, I don't have a leveling guide because I just simply don't have time, unfortunately, to make an entire guide. If you have questions, you can come into my, my Twitch stream, but I will break down basically what I plan on doing. I'm gonna level with Blade Vortex as soon as I can get it, simply because I want to. Um, you can level with something else if you, you know, if you prefer that method, but in events like this, I'm not competing. And if you're watching this video, you're probably not competing either. So I'm just gonna play with Blade Vortex as soon as I get it. I'm gonna start with Try Heralds and just do as much LE damage as I can. So Thunder, Ash, and Ice. And as soon as I can get my hands on Obliteration Wands, I'm going to buy them. There's going to be a lot of currency to be had while leveling because there's so much stuff in our zones. So you're going to get a few Chaos here and there, which you can use to, to buy things like Obliteration Wands. 
If you're finding that you're dying too much with the Tri Heralds, you can drop one or two of them. You can put Grace in and that'll help you avoid most attacks. I feel like while leveling most of the time when you die, it's because you find yourself in a pack full of enemies and they all attack you at once. But if you have Grace, that'll, that will not happen. So that's really all I have. Um, if you want to follow along, I will be playing this on launch tomorrow of the event. I am very excited to play this. Mayhem looks like it's going to be pretty exciting with the difficult mods that they've added. So it should be fun. So come follow along if you're going to play this build with me. Uh, come ask questions in the stream. I will be live all day tomorrow. So thank you for watching. Uh, Twitch.tv slash AER0 underscore underscore. Come check it out. And uh, as always, take care.